All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk about how to do a thread milling operation. First thing we're going to do is make sure that we are set to top, okay, set to 2D, and our Z plane set to Z0. We're going to draw as a circle, and we're going to let it snap to the origin, drop it, and change it to 0.5. So that will be the major diameter of a half inch 13 hole, okay, or thread. I'm going to change the color, right click, select, okay, black, okay, and then going forward everything will be black. It's also kind of of a thin line, so in order to change that, right click on line, click on the entity, click OK, click that second one available there. And you can see that line shows up a little bit better, or that circle shows up a little bit better. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and select this second one. So everything we draw going forward will be just a little bit thicker. All right, so we have us a half inch circle. Always confirm that it is. So what you can do is uh, click on dimension, smart dimension, and just confirm that you just drew a, a half inch diameter. Click OK. And then you can say undo. Okay. That just uh, make sure that you didn't accidentally drop it and, and it didn't take your edit. All right. Machine, mill, and let's just pick a mill three axis vertical machining center. And we're going to right click next to the arrow. We're going to mill, come down here to circle tool paths, and pick thread mill. Click OK. We're going to select entities, select a circle, click OK. All right, so then uh, your parameter page opens up. We're going to pick a tool and we're just going to pick a, a straight up end mill. OK, and, and let's say that the, the end mill that you uh, have, the thread mill that you have, let's say that it is a 5 16 diameter okay now the software is not gonna show the threads being machined on the on the um, solid model so we're just after the tool path it's gonna create the helical motion if you will and whatever the diameter is of your thread mill when you open up this end mill you're gonna put that diameter exactly there if it's let's say 295 or 330 then make sure you put it in this field I'm gonna assume we're gonna work with a 312 so we're gonna call that tool number one enter okay then let's say it's uh, most likely a carbide end mill and we're gonna use 125 service foot or whatever it ra it's rated for usually the manufacturer suggests a certain service footage so let put that in that field it automatically selects the spindle speed for you and then the feed rate is just whatever you feel comfortable with depending on the depth of cut depending on the material you're cutting okay so we're going to do eight inches a minute so we just uh All right, so 1528 spindle speed that is based on 125 service foot, eight inches a minute. And that is really depending on the type of material you're cutting. And the initial plunge rate is 20 inches a minute. Okay. So then we go to cut parameters. Now, the first example I'm going to give you is based on one tooth. Now you have one that is this style right here that, that you see in the picture. But let's just assume we only have one single tooth, okay? So the pitch would be a half inch 13 would be one inch divided by 13. So that's an 076 pitch, okay? Compensation type, where, so it will post out cutter comp. We're going to do an ID thread. We're going to do a right hand thread. And so to climb mill, what it's going to do, it's going to go to the bottom first. 
and then spiral up okay now if you want to do it from the top to the bottom then it's going to be conventional cutting so that is your choice as to how you want to do that okay so let's assume we're going to go top to bottom conventional milling which is going to give us a right hand thread and an id thread lead in is the next i'm going to put a zero here and i usually unclick the helical entry but i do want to start in the center okay linking parameters absolute let's say your thread depth is a half inch deep so from the top of the surface that you're milling you're going to be producing a thread a half inch deep okay feed plane of 0.1 and let's say a rapid two plane of one inch above the part make sure planes is set the top coolant on after and click OK so there is your toolpath let's go ahead and verify it or backplot it so I click on backplot there's our tool now doesn't look like a thread mill doesn't matter it's a it's whatever diameter your thread mill is that's what it's basing the tool path on okay so there it goes it makes one pass from top to bottom comes back to center and pulls out all right so let's say you don't want to take it all in one pass we'll go back into the parameters let them open up we'll go into multi passes make sure you put a check mark in that box number of rough passes let's say three and you're going to put 0.01 and then one finish pass with two thousand two thousands left to take out on that finish pass okay so we're just going to close it regen and now if you zoom in you can see one two three rough passes and then a finish pass so let's click on verify back plot that's one two three and then a finish pass looking at it over the top we zoom in and we turn quick verify on you can see it's leaving material in that first pass it gets closer and closer each pass to that finished diameter so that's how you do multiple passes okay there you go so let's say that you had two holes doing the same thing so let's say that we are going to X form translate we're going to select this diameter click OK we're going to copy that 1.5 and let's just make two copies and click OK we left click on geometry we right click we can reselect all entities and we just click on all three make sure they're all highlighted click OK click OK and we have tool paths for all three so here it's based on X0 Y0 here the tool paths or the code will be based on that center line distance and that one double the center line distance make sense so that's how quickly you can uh, duplicate whatever tool path you created on one all right so let's go ahead and get rid of these two right here click delete delete all selected entities that leaves one circle I'm gonna click regenerate so we're back down to one circle fit top 
fit. All right, so now let's go back into the parameters and let's go into the cut parameters and let's say that our tool is not a single tooth but let's just count the teeth on this one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so we're going to put ten right here just because it represents that tool the pitch is still the same okay the method is still the same an id thread it's a right hand thread and we're going to do it from top to bottom so we're going to do the lead in all that stays the same multi passes let me go ahead and um, unclick that for now linking parameters all stay the same click OK now we're gonna to have to regen because we made changes and we're gonna back plot so now notice the toolpath It goes deep and it just makes barely one revolution because all 10 teeth are engaged all at the same time. Make sense? Actually, a half inch of those 10 teeth stacked, stacked on top of each other are engaged in that material. So you can see it doesn't have to take as many helical motions. Okay, that spiral is only engaging, making one full spiral and then coming out. So that toolpath was done all in one pass. So we're gonna go back into parameters. We activate multi passes again. Then we're gonna do the same thing just like we did with the single tooth tool and you can see it takes the same three passes and then a finish pass but it only has to do one revolution because multiple teeth are cutting all at the same time all right so i'm going to make one more recommendation let's go back into parameters and instead of conventional cutting we go back into cut parameters we go from bottom to top click OK regen and back plot so now notice instead of top down it goes from bottom up so therefore it is climb cutting and that's probably gonna produce a better finish for you so that's it. So if you have any questions, please uh, leave me a comment below and see if I can help you. Thanks for watching.